Okay, so now we go to section 6 of the NRC. Now, you remember the paragraph B thereof, the best evidence obtainable rule. The Hantex case, you remember the Hantex case? Uh, wherein this, uh, there's this guy from the BIR, an intern in customs, uh, Bureau of Customs, and, uh, you know, whistleblower, and what the BIR provided at the time is, in the prosecution of the case, are just the photocopies and of the documents uh, used to prosecute the taxpayer. The Supreme Court said, although there is this power by the commissioner to obtain the best evidence available there is it doesn't mean that you have to violate the rules of evidence you also you, you need to explain also why uh, you have these documents or why you do not have the original copy of it but you just don't get uh, like you don't do the hugot sa hangin thing here what is provided here by the power or the power is that the commissioner has the power to obtain the best evidence available there is or if that's secondary evidence then you have to explain why you don't have the original of it but that, that's the gist of this one but it's different with the best evidence rule as provided in the rules of evidence just remember the Hantex case and there is this paragraph F or this was amended by RA 1021. You remember that paragraph F is this is all about the power of the commissioner to inquire into bank deposit accounts and other related information held by financial institutions. Now there are three um, exceptions here. The commissioner can inquire into the bank deposit of a taxpayer if it involves the dissident to determine his gross estate or if the taxpayer filed an application for compromise under section 204A2 of the code or or by reason of his financial incapacity to pay the tax and as um, provided in the amendment the there is this provision right now that if a foreign tax authority requests any information per pursuant to an international convention or agreement on tax matters, which the Philippines is a signatory of, the commissioner, as provided here, is mandated to provide the examination here. Here it is. Uh, in case a request from a foreign tax authority for tax information held by banks and financial institutions, the exchange of information should be done in a secure manner to, to ensure confidentiality thereof under such rules and regulations as may be promulgated by the Secretary of Finance upon recommendation of the Commissioner. Now, here are the, uh, the conditions. Um, the Commissioner shall provide the tax information obtained from banks and financial institutions pursuant. You remember this, there, there has got to be a convention or a treaty or at the very least an agreement upon request of a foreign tax authority when such requesting foreign tax authority has provided the following information and these are the information that uh, that should be provided by the um, foreign tax authority and the foreign tax authority is defined here it shall refer to the tax authority or tax administration of the requesting state under the tax treaty or convention to which the Philippines is a signatory or a party of. If the foreign tax authority or if, or if a, another country requests for an information pertaining to what uh, the issue on or the information about the taxpayer from, from the banks and there is no treaty between the countries or between the Philippines and that country, then this provision will not apply. Okay, so just remember this. And also, whenever you read section 6, always cross-read this with paragraph F or with the last paragraph of section 97. And what is that? Section 97 is all about the knowledge of the bank on the death of a person who maintained a bank deposit account. You take note of this phrase or this word alone or 
jointly with another. The bank shall not allow any withdrawal from the said deposit account unless the commissioner has certified that the taxes imposed thereon by this title, the estate tax, have been paid. But the administrator or any one of the heirs may, upon authorization by the commissioner, withdraw an amount not exceeding 20,000 with the said certification. So you remember the car because, or the certificate authorizing registration, you have to pay the estate tax for you to be issued a certificate. This is what uh, the law is saying about the certificate authorizing registration. Uh, or for the, if you settle the estate, then it includes the real estate, the registrable one, the personal properties, including the cash. So if the bank has knowledge, what is the knowledge or how would the bank gain knowledge of that? Or how will the bank know? if What's the, what's the evidence for the bank to know that the person is really dead or the depositor is really dead? Through the death certificate, right? That's the best evidence. But then again, it shall not allow withdrawal. The question is, how about, sir, if... Um, ATM. So, what are you going to do about that? Well, it only means that he is the favoritong apo. He knows the pin. But uh, the idea here, okay, is that the bank shall not allow withdrawal if it has knowledge of the death of a person, regardless if the account is, if the account holder is alone or with another. If the other party will withdraw, then the the law says you have to settle the estate and pay the corresponding tax. Therefore, so that's that's about it for section six. Uh, this was I think asked before, and it might be asked again in the light of as I again uh, would mention ASEAN integration. There there would be there would be. Uh, instances that foreign tax jurisdiction will or foreign tax authority will inquire or uh, yeah uh, information about the taxpayer and also speaking of treaty uh, I will emphasize again you read Jutz Bank versus CIR this is all about when the, uh, there is this RP Germany tax treaty it's another hmm. okay there you go availment Sorry for the spelling error. The pun. Anyway, but the the idea here in this case is that the BIR required additional requirements or imposed additional requirements to avail of the tax reliefs provided by the RP Germany Germany tax treaty. The Supreme Court was pissed off. The Supreme Court said the obligation to comply with the tax treaty must take precedence over the objective of RMO 1-2000. Logically, non-compliance with tax treaties has negative implications or on internal rela international relations and unduly discourages foreign investors. While the consequences sought to be prevented by RO number 1-2000, revenue order, what was this, I was involve an administrative procedure. This may be remedied through other system management processes, like the imposition of final penalty, but you cannot deprive the other party to avail of the tax treaty because the BIR imposed additional requirements. This is, it was struck down because we have to respect the treaty. So next we will discuss about on this is the more important one, section 22, on the, the definitions. We will discuss that later.